You're listening to the Game Tenants Podcast. What's up, and welcome to the Game Tenants Podcast, the failed adventures of two gamers and their quest for Gamecast stardom. AKA worthlessly lazy, but so game crazy. I am Church of the Game Grinder, and as always, joined by my excellent co host, Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming. What's up? This is doing doing pretty good. Pretty good. Been a little bit. It's been a lot of bit. It's been a lot of bit, but we're here, episode 107. Just, just here to update everyone. Let them know we're still alive. Still alive. We didn't break up the band. We're, we're still good. We good. Yeah. Just to uh, focus on that worthlessly lazy part. And it's all on okay. my end. It's all on my end. Well, we 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 kind of trade off. Sometimes, sometimes it'll be like, oh, yeah, I, I, I can do it, but. And then other times it's like, oh, I'm not feeling it, but. Uh, let's go okay so i'm glad uh glad we're both motivated ish ish <laughs> <laughs> try not to slouch it's too good. Much. Too much. Yeah. yeah yeah we're good yeah we got some we got some things to talk about a uh, few things a few little things it feels like we're in kind of a dry spell as far as like cool stuff i don't know no oh, it's like, it's weird things are always cool but i've just Nothing is uh really, really sparkled lately. Like something like "Holy shit!" No, there's been, there's been very many of those. I had I had I had a few recently, but we'll we'll get there. I mean, I can think of like a couple, but like not as uh, not as frequent as I've become accustomed to. But uh, we're gonna talk about those. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't do the the high pitch thing very well. Not on command like that. Oh, I'm a fan of Jews, so I can do that whenever I want. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, jump into the retro game highlight then. Uh, yeah. So last time, which was a while ago. Many moons. Uh, you had talked about San Francisco Rush. or Wasn't it Rush 2? Rush 2. Yes. Fuck, Rush. Fuck San Francisco Rush. Yeah. Rush 2 is the shit. Cool. I mean, right. San Francisco right. Rush is cool. Not as cool as Rush 2. Or else I would have talked about it. <laughs> Just kidding. What about yeah. Rush 2064 or whatever? 2022? Was it? 2077? 20, 2020, maybe? I can't remember. It's the sad time. The sad time. Yeah. San Francisco Rush, where you don't drive around, you stay at home. San uh, yeah. So this time uh, we're going to talk about a game that I've talked about on this podcast. I, as far as I know, I haven't actually talked about it as a retro game highlight, but my outlines only go so far back. So maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I don't give a shit. We're blurring the lines here, but what is it? It's one of the best games on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and that is Jackal. Welcome to Famicom System. Fantastic. It's one of the best on the Famicom as well. Uh, yes, and it's actually it has a different name on the Famicom, and I can't remember what that is. Let me look it up real quick. Goddamn. Uh, uh, top. I think it's called Top Gunner. Okay. Which well, is a I lame. See what, I see name. why they would. Uh, I see why they would change that. Yeah. Even if like, there was a movie called Top Gun around that time, that no one saw, but they still felt the need, you know jackal though one of the I, I it's a personal favorite for me konami classic i like it driving around in a little jeep shooting things rescuing hostages i mean we're shooting hostages because fuck them <laughs> i always save them i'm just kidding <laughs> try not to run them over but you can run over. that's probably because i i i you know i have a short attention span i thought it was called jackass so i was just acting like a jackass and <laughs> just mowing down everything fuck it a lot of fun though uh 
is. Banging soundtrack. Oh my it's god. Cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, surprisingly. A lot, a lot of people probably just don't even get the time of day. Like, oh, it's cheap. Must they're like, oh, it's just like another like little like, military game. Eh, no, man. This is like premium OG run and gun. Hotness. Yeah. Uh fun, uh great uh co op, a lot of fun. I mean, you can really sit down and play it in like one sitting. Uh it's if you really short. It's not it's not super hard, but you know, provide a little challenge for you. Not every game needs to be ridiculous and hair pulling. Yeah. I enjoy a little bit of an easy game once in a while. It's good. So enough. yeah, and like I said, it's one of my favorites. Top five, maybe. Maybe top five NES game. Do it. Could be. Could do be. The official Definitely list. top ten. Money where your mouth is, do the official list. Yeah. I think I might have done a list at one point. Do it again. If you're not sure. <laughs> make a video holy cow what are you talking about that's crazy (laughs) it's almost as infrequent as podcast episodes lately yeah i did a video holy shit (laughs) you know it wasn't just a podcast i mean i did too but jeez i know i'm I'm, I'm even more infrequent you do pickup videos and i'm i've rolled i've rolled the laziness into like keeping pace that's that's a cornerstone of my other podcast keeping pace pick up well i I just talk about here rather than do another video yeah (laughs) pretty much but anyways jackal absolutely recommend it if you have not played it it's awesome yeah yeah uh yeah so we got uh some a lot of announcements lately some things off still a ways off some things coming soonish things i'm mostly excited about hopefully everybody else is excited about these games too and yeah we'll just get to it Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We already uh, knew it was coming, but we got no, a release date. Yeah, no, we know. Yeah, when. Uh, and I, for some reason, I didn't type the date, but I believe it's May fourteenth. Mass. Let me let, let me. Did you let get me, that tattooed yet? Let me get the the Google going on this real quick. God damn, it's like the researchers podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The last minute. Yeah, real real time research podcast is what we're changing the name to. <laughs> yeah right hey i'm pretty quick I at know. least at least you're not like nadab from your mom's house podcast they're like done the topic and he's found it and you're like oh, for fuck's sakes <laughs> uh i do not have the release date i can't find it drop the ball but anyways this yeah. is coming in bed up coming up in may may 4 is may 14th um yeah and it's a compilation mass effect one through three updated some graphics uh they've did some minor uh fixes and improvements uh a few edits here and there how much they need to improve on those fucking games yeah i i think from what it sounds like the biggest changes are going to be in mass effect one with uh the mako and uh some combat stuff some bitches don't know how to drive that thing I, I'm actually surprised there's, I never really had heard, there's never really been a lot of conversation about Mass Effect 1 for some reason. Um, you talk to the wrong people. Apparently, but like, I always kind of had fun. I mean, it was. I liked it. I liked it. it there was a lot of pointlessness to it. A lot of time wasting, but just like what it was like going on a planet being able to drive around looking for these secret, like kind of like hidden things i always had a lot of fun with that yeah, uh i was I, like I slightly like disappointed when they went to the just the planet scanning you yeah. know uh yeah i like i liked going to like on the planet because that's kind of like what i wanted out of that game I was like oh cool you can like go to a yeah and go to different planets rather than just like click on a level go down there you know like it's I liked the exploration aspect. Mm-hmm. Like my favorite thing about those games, honestly, I was like, I don't know. But they they've retooled. So I think it's more controls and maybe like some of the how the physics works. But it's still there. But I'm, I mean, I am watch beyond I'm- excited. Uh, I haven't revisited Mass Effect since. I mean, they're one of my favorite series ever. I, Unfortunately, uh, I've only played through them once. So this will be my. 
second playthrough. All of them? You've only yeah. played through all I've of them? I've only played the all through. Yeah. I actually, I actually just, it's going to be a, a thing to go back to one for me. I got all the achievements in it and uh, I beat that game probably like six or seven times mm. to the point where I was just like, I'm fine if I never play this again. I love it, but I'm fine if I never play it again. It's kind of like the Bioshock games. Well, and then I love Bioshock One, I love Bioshock Two, but I'm like, I'm good though. I don't, I don't ever need to play them again. Kind of like when I saw Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. I saw them, so I'm good. I don't. But other bands I've saw, I'm like, when are they coming around again? Yeah, I need to see them again. I mean, mean, Mass Effect One had like, very, you know, a lot of significance. You know, definitely. Uh, There are some things I like about it that pisses me off that they switched in the the other games, like it. They took a lot of what I consider like good RPG elements out of mm-hmm. it, like having to get the different attachments for your gear to make it better and oh, make yeah. sure your guns like don't cool down. And they just added ammo in two and three, and I was like, "What's this bullshit?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, well, you, you might have, you might have named, named some children. Yeah, related to Mass Effect things, right? Yeah. Well, my oldest son is named after the bad guy from Mass Effect One. My son's Aaron, so yeah, I like Mass Effect. <laughs> and hey, Mass Effect is awesome. Uh, jokingly, I will say, um, <laughs> it, the phrasing is totally wrong, so I'm gonna like reverse this. I'm gonna say, like, um, uh, I need to think of a different way to say this. Hold on, give me one sec. It's like, um, fair, fair, farewell to Mass Effect. Because apparently oh, there was yeah. one famous yeah. camera shot, like scene where they did like this low camera angle of Miranda's ass for like no other reason to say, "Hey, Miranda has a banging ass." So you can which... be like, "Nice bum." <laughs> but the, like my phrasing that f- comes to mind immediately is "R.I.P. Ass Effect," and <laughs> if you put that together, it just sounds wrong because it's "Rip Ass Effect." Yeah, <laughs> and I, I want nothing to do with that. But uh, I know there's a lot of people that, well, spazzed out, you know, internet, whatever. People are like, eh, took out the butt shot. And hey, I'll, I'll be honest, I like that shot, but I get why they took it out. You're heterosexual males, so I guess we're not allowed to have an opinion. Well, and that. she's a genetically, she's like genetically perfect. So it's like, oh, hell yeah, she's going to have a fucking nice bum. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna you know? sit down and say ow. And I'm, and I'm team. I'm team. Team ass. You know. So. Well, yeah. Is she gonna like? She's gonna. If she sits down on pavement. She's just gonna. Like, you're gonna hear a click, and she's gonna say ow because she has no ass now, or what? It's just but, her spine hitting. That's just Miranda. Something. She's she's no tally. So. Yeah. You know. You know the. You know the real away team is always Tally and Garris. Absolutely. Got tally it. and Garris. You got it. Gotta. It's one of those things in your brain. You like <laughs> do that, and you're like, "Why?" Your brain just says you gotta. Yeah. I would switch yeah. up. I would switch it up a little bit sometimes. You know, but Garrus was a always variety. Garrus was my bro the entire way through. I I, I switched up that it was my main team, but I'd switch things up just because I'd like to, you know, of course, get your other characters built up and then hear their different interactions. You're just trying to fuck. That's the only reason you. I up. am not. My <laughs> shepherd is. Well, I mean, your, your shepherd is wholesome. Fuck off! No, I don't even say that shit. <laughs> there's don't a good, a there's a good edit of uh, of a shepherd conversation where he's like, "We'll bang," and uh, we'll bang, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring me back at the ship. We'll bang, okay. I almost bought a goddamn shirt of that. I love that. So much. <laughs> I I actually have to restrain myself from saying it when I say something that reminds me. But <laughs> we'll bang, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, to certain people, there's only one person I can say that to, but sometimes I do let it out, but some other times I'm like, I don't want to have to yeah, explain for 10 minutes that I'm not actually sexually harassing someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just put that over, you know, I'll meet you in this, uh, you know, I'll usually like, yeah, I'll meet you over there in like 10 minutes. Well, bang, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, why, why am I like this? <laughs> uh, and, uh, I also want to mention for you know the 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 people who have no respect for their uh, finances. There's also the um, there's like a like a loot crate thing. 
Yeah, I, I didn't actually put this on. Um, it's a yeah, it's a legendary cash. I think yeah, that's what they're calling it. Legendary cash, C A C H E, and it's it's a collector's. It's they're not calling it a collector's edition because it doesn't come with a game. It's separate, but it's actually priced pretty fairly. Like so, if it came with a game, it would be you know about what you'd expect for this but it's uh, it's a uh, essentially a collector's edition that comes with a uh, shepherd's helmet a steel book and then i think there's like uh some pins and uh art print or something yeah i'm getting it i want the collector armor helmet give me that it's like uh, yeah. you know if, if i'm gonna get the fucking fallout 76 collector's edition for a helmet it's like how could i not get like mass effect because it's one of the best shit ever, you know. I'd I'd rather have the shepherd helmet than my doom helmet, even. You would? Well, I'll pass it over. I'll have two doom helmets and I'll keep, keep my doom bitch. helmet. But I want that. Sh I want that shepherd helmet. So I got that. I got that on pre-order. And maybe I'll play. Maybe I'll play Mass Effect with the helmet and the Omni Blade equipped. You maybe? better after not playing Doom Eternal with your helmet on. I was <laughs> so soured on you for a little bit. <laughs> that was probably one of our hiatuses where we didn't do. For I'm like, I can't even talk to you right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah well ah well uh so moving on um some events have happened various studios doing their various hey here's what's going on stuff so i just want to touch on a few of those um because i always get pretty i'm i like game announcements or you know even if they're not giving us solid dates but some of these we do got dates on um so there's the nintendo direct and they announced all kinds of things. The various people are excited about different stuff. Are you, you know, um, of course, there's Smash characters that just make me yawn and roll my eyes at this point. More people are like, Oh, great, more anime sword fighters. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's the two, oh, the two wow. main female leads from Xenoblade, but then there is a Skyward even, Sword even, remake. Even when it's a game I care about, I'm like, Honestly, you're a Skyward Sword I'm, guy. I'm, I, I don't have a problem with. I've as never far, played. It. As far as motion controls go, that was one of the better implications. I'm not calling it my favorite Zelda game. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling it absolute trash like a lot of people uh, do. Someone actually gave me a copy, and he's like, uh, "It's a friend of mine," and he goes, "My only thing I ask is that when you beat it, you destroy it. I want like a video of you blowing it up. I hate that game." <laughs> and honestly like it takes a bit of getting used to but i i had no you know like compared to like playing like shooters and shit mm -hmm. with the the motion controls like i i just hated the shoehorning that the wii did yeah like, there's so many games that could have been so much better but they shoehorn that shit in and just completely ruined it well now apparently uh motion controls are optional yeah and uh, i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna get it because you know Zelda. All the Zelda can all the collections gotta stay complete. But at the same time, I'm like, I might wait for a sale. Hmm. Like, or find someone wait for it to go on sale on a marketplace. Cause I'm like, I'm not really down with paying twenty dollars more than I paid for the copy that came with the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. It's it, 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 it's full price. Yeah. Sixty dollars. Like, and games cost more now. Well, yeah, sixty American. Yeah, 60 Canadian was when it came out before. I think it might have even been 49 Canadian. And now they're going to want fucking $80 Canadian from me. And I'm like, I don't know if I like it that much. For a 15-year-old game with updated graphics. It's like, it's like, what, dude? I'm like, oh, it'd be fine to play with a controller. Like, I like playing. Nintendo gonna Nintendo. Yeah, more of their, more of their no effort port. <laughs> but, um... Uh, you know, okay, sure. Yeah, there's that stuff. But actually, most of the stuff from the Nintendo Direct that I was excited for was non... It's like not Nintendo, it's Square Enix. And the last few years, as far as I'm concerned, like I'm not a fan of Square Enix uh, in general, but they've 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 been kind of killing it for me anyways. You're not a fan of Square Enix? Not really. Hmm. I was a... I, I'm a I'm diehard Squaresoft guy. And well, uh, I just... You're hard on it, man. <laughs> But uh, so they uh, we got announced and release date for Legend of Mana uh, remaster, 
and that is uh, June 24th, and that's on all platforms, I think, except Xbox. Unfortunately, Can we just do fucking Legend of Dragoon already. <laughs> and they just yeah yeah, or you know they don't don't have to remake, just you know remaster so we could play it on you know HD console or HD TVs and stuff. That's all people want. Like, come on, don't and change then, it at all because you'll make people mad. But then other yeah. people like, didn't change it at all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Legend of Mana. I'm pretty stoked about. I've wanted to play it. I've had it for many years. Just hadn't played it. Don't want to play um, it that bad then. I do. I just backlog for miles, and I, I mean, I had it's in my collection. I got it on PS One, but hey, now I finally will. How do I? And I'll enjoy it and stunning hd because they're not, it's 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 a it's a remaster so yeah you know i'm just chirping you i've got it too and haven't played yeah. it <laughs> i haven't had it very many years but i've had it for a bit yeah yeah and then the other game that i thought looked really sweet um is project triangle strategy yeah uh, looks is, like uh, another game in the in the styling of uh, Octopath Traveler, so yeah, and likely, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was Project Octopath Traveler. So, this is probably just gonna be called Triangle Strategy, which some weird fucking names they're going with, but the game yeah. looks usually, rad. Usually, the project name is like a, a fucking code word mm. that you don't use, it might be <laughs> like something in the game. But a uh, project name of the thing that it's just going to be called without project. <laughs> I'm very creative. Uh, but yeah, this is essentially it's a tactics game, you know, Final Fantasy tactics style. Uh, I didn't know this, but apparently it's been 12 years since there's actually been like a tactics game. Um, it's what a lot of people are saying. Or like one of the bigger ones. It's been a whole while. Besides uh, Fire Emblem. And then re-releasing some other stuff. It hasn't yeah. been many, a whole lot, you know, like the stuff like XCOM and that. Yeah. Stuff, you know, but like a actual RPG one, I don't know, Langrisser getting re-released. So that's about it. Stuff like that. Yeah. There's not very, there hasn't been a Final Fantasy Tactics, that's for sure. And what, yeah. last one, uh, PSP. Uh, quite a while. But uh of course it's a switch uh a switch exclusive at least as is might come to pc as octopath Tra traveler did but i don't know about that so here nor there uh and then one other announcement that i was like hey that's pretty cool because i've actually been thinking about trying to p at least pick up this game series at some point because i've heard cool things uh, uh ninja gaiden master collection yeah, that's pretty cool it's uh it's the the what seventh gen and six and six and seventh gen yeah uh well, i wasn't i like those games but uh, i'm not gonna be double dipping i got them i'm good True. but uh yeah they're I think great most games. of them that are great games but it's not a game i need to own multiple times yeah those are um nin uh did ninja ninja theory do those yes yeah. Yeah, Ninja Theory went on to do, um, not a whole lot. Senua, yeah. Senua's sacrifice. Yep, that's where they are now. It's kind of cool, but they. I mean, uh, no, is it not? It's just Team Ninja. Team Ninja. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Team Ninja. God, I was like, wait, that didn't make any sense. Team Ninja, right? They're doing Neo now. Good thing we're the research in the moment podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey I, it's kind of hard to remember so many studios i'm not that cool but the, yeah so they're mostly known for like dead are alive and ninja gaiden and most recently neo yeah so hey yeah it's like you know it's like that's cool collection you know yeah, they're good challenging games they don't include like silk song which is like come on man let's, let's include them all hit the whole series I don't know. They don't have Ninja Gaiden. Was it Yaiba or whatever the fuck it was called? Mm, yeah, I think I have that. That one I ha I, I do have, and that, I mean, that looks I, pretty cool. I think I gave you that one, didn't I? Didn't I have an extra pretty sure you did. It? Yeah, pretty sure. But it was like I haven't played it, but I've heard it's pretty. It's pretty much panned. Yeah, because they tried something different. People don't yeah. want. People don't I, want that. I think it looks cool. It looks good. I remember uh, Sigma Sigma Two was the first game I remember seeing. 
uh at like 70 dollars when other games were like 60 canadian hmm. and uh when i still worked at walmart it was like remember that time i told you about the great uh, dollar drop of games mm-hmm. this was 70 dollars in the case and it went to a dollar we uh, like, uh, yeah, side yeah. side note that shit never happens in minnesota when I, I see people all the time like hey get down to your walmarts or clearance in games in minnesota they the clearance to them is like maybe twenty dollars tops if you're lucky man i mean that's that one close to your house that i went to that one time mm-hmm. i think you said that's one you when you go to walmart that's the one you yeah use. that one sucks go to a different one <laughs> That's basically that one, all over. That one fucking sucks. It was like I saw stuff at that one. I'm like, how do they still have this? Like, they still had like way old games that like any other like they must have a cheap ass manager that's like, nope, you're gonna buy it at <laughs> buy it at 50 bucks. And you're like, it's a PS2 sports game, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's buying it, just yeah. cleared up for a penny, and you'd still have a tough sell there. Yeah, like. Yeah. Anyways, or to break it to you, your local Walmart sucks more ass than my Walmart. Yeah. And that's saying something because I call I call mine like an end of the road one. Like we get everything last. It seems like everyone else is. Oh yeah, it's just showing up at Walmart. So I'm like, oh cool, I can check mine in three weeks. Yeah. And sometimes it actually shows up early, and I'm like, wow. Like those uh, X Men figures I bought a couple weeks ago. I was like, I don't even think these are supposed to be out yet. Fuck yeah. Lucky. Lucky to get that that's, inside. That's not very often. Yeah. Especially especially like when I'm getting it before people in uh, the Minnesota toy group. Mm. That's like just I don't know. You've uh, introduced me to it and it's both a blessing and a curse. <laughs> like I'm finding out about stuff I'm blissfully unaware of and then yeah. like, then I'm sad I can't find it at my one store that might get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, well, yeah, so looking for good clearance deals, try any other Walmart with that one. Yeah. And, uh, maybe we'll, well, you maybe we'll get lucky for the, for the $5 games and shit. Maybe not in Minnesota though. Anyways, <laughs> at all? Uh, not I really. Think, I think some other ones might. Not that I've seen, but Minnesota's uptight. Well, maybe won't. not, maybe not in the cities. Cheap. Uh, BlizzCon 2021, all online, which is kind of weird because they were selling tickets to that. And most of the like stuff, like there's just available on YouTube. So I'm kind of confused about that. But I mean, yeah, there's been some weird shit going on. But I, as is, I still like, I love Blizzard games. And I've been seething at the mouth for this because there's been rumors about this for a while diablo 2 resurrection frothing yeah that's what i meant seething Seething angry yeah (laughs) i was angry that i needed it you have your mouth (laughs) uh diablo 2 resurrection Ah! and i again diablo 2 resurrection Ah! all right not only diablo 2 resurrection coming out to PCs, but for the first time ever to consoles as well. Uh, and I think that is uh, so uh, exciting because uh, there's so many people that have never experienced one of the best, if not my favorite game. I don't ever. know what people's goddamn problem is because even I've played the shit out of that game. And, and I'm even, not a PC gamer at yeah, all. You don't even like a PC game. You uh, said I don't like video games? Don't like PC gaming. Okay, yeah, that, that's valid. <laughs> um no no uh any update no. on the phone one is it is that gonna is that still good is that still the best way to play i don't have a phone so <laughs> uh you know i gotta bring it up anytime Does you guys have phones <laughs> fuck you fuck. <laughs> anyways diablo Every- resurrection Every- uh no release date yet uh this is interestingly uh some people have probably heard as of late um uh or i guess it's been a little while ago now vicarious visions was uh acquired by activision or uh activision blizzard they were activision they did the tony hawk one one and two remaster 
So people are like, oh, they're not going to be making more Tony Hawk, but they're working on the Diablo 2 resurrection and or resurrected. And is with how quality of a job they did on Tony Hawk. Yeah. Uh, and there's a fantastic video. They did. They talked to some. Well, I don't know. Some fucking streamer guy that I don't know who the hell this guy is. Uh, but they did this video where he talked with the developers uh, for about 45 minutes talking about like how they did this. And I like, I have so much faith in this. Like it is no changes really like gameplay coding numbers. Everything that was in Diablo two is in Diablo two resurrected. Uh, it's the same engine running behind it, but you can, you know, it's the, the, you know, updated graphics. Uh, they talked about like the attention to detail that they did. They did do some quality life improvements that I'm pretty excited about a uh, big one being, and this sounds like such a, a non thing, but it was huge it was a shared stash, meaning uh, you could have one stash for like various characters where before, like I had eight accounts yeah, it was of, a like what six like... characters each that were just holding on all the items that I was like hoarding because I was collecting all the set and uniques in the game for no real reason because just because because you know you always get like the best stuff you get isn't even for the class you're playing and you're like fuck sakes <laughs> so shared stash that's big uh you know pvp is gonna be like as it was um I mean I'm just beyond excited I put thousands of hours into Diablo 2 I play it for like almost three years sweet man i am so excited um un unfortunately uh from what it sounds like not at least at launch uh no cross play which uh hugely missed opportunity why not do everything you can to have the biggest community but i'm i'm sure both communities are gonna be pretty sizable so that's freaking nut sex ah oh, man but and uh, and for the, yeah, I've seen yeah, people yeah. saying, hey, does it include Lord of Destruction? Absolutely, Lord of Destruction. You can't have Diablo 2 without Lord of Destruction as well. So, well, it's one thing we uh, we skipped over. Uh, it's good that they got all the stuff, but it's like the Mass Effect Legendary Edition mm -hmm. it has a few omissions, but it's got just about everything. In it. Oh, yeah, that's right. And multi multiplayer isn't in Mass Effect 3, which bums a lot of people out. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yep. yep. And it was it was okay. It sucked. It sucked that you had had to do it to get the hundred percent get uh, uh, galactic readiness, but or yeah. galaxy readiness. But it was it was actually pretty well for like a you know like a wave shooter or whatever. Yeah, it was it was fun. I enjoyed the time that I put into it. We put a good amount. In and there. then yeah, no uh, no pinnacle uh, station. Yeah, Is that that was. Yeah, that kind of sucks because that was then, actually pretty cool from what the, I remember. Yeah, the coding got corrupted for that. I'm like, build it, do it again, build it again, build it they, like they, the mil, mil, million dollar man or in whatever. The, in the first one, that was one of the easiest ways to acquire the best armor. Six million dollar man, that's what I meant to say. A million dollar man, like Ted DiBiase, buy them. <laughs> they gotta they make them, make them, they got the. Make them better, make them faster. We got the technology or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember how that shit goes. Well, it's close. You 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 meant you blended it. Don't ever it's ask really, me to quote things because I'm cause fucking million, terrible. Because Million Dollar Man was a wrestler. Yes. You know who else is a wrestler? Steve Austin. Who's the who's the <laughs> Million Dollar Man? Steve Austin. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> track. Nice. But yeah. Nice. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm bumble. I I mean, it's a, it was just a kind of short little little add on, but yeah, you, like you, it was an easy way to get the best armor in the game. What would have been really impressive if if they were like, hey, we lost, you know, the original source code, but we went ahead and remade it anyways. Like that's what I said. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually while we're still on the topic, I meant I meant to mention like. I hope their quality of life stuff doesn't include them making ammo for the first one and like leaving that kind of shit in because that's one thing I had really liked over the other two is I really hope they don't uh, streamline it like everything kind of plays the same. But I guess we'll see. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, aside from uh, Diablo 2, they announced another playable class in Diablo 4, the Rogue, which I'm stoked about. I always play the 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 ranged classes typically so that's neat showed some more you know trailers they had a video where they talked about some of the kind of like open world stuff and more character stuff uh no of course no release date that's next year at the soonest i think for diablo 4 if not like 2023 yeah but i am hyped because diablo is my jam I, I like it. it. I love it so much. Hopefully they so hurry much. up with it. Right? Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, there's another event I want to talk about, but there is uh, another event I want to talk about, and that's the Mortal Kombat movie. We got a trailer. Yeah, we did. God damn, it looks good. It looks... I watched it a yeah. bunch of times. I showed the kids. The kids love the blood knife. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't want to like, as as the game beaters once said, I don't want to yuck on anybody's yum. Uh, or Dan from the game beater said that. Um, I I'm always kind of disappointed in in some of these like franchise things when they do an origin story again. It's like, come on, do something different, like. Oh man, I'm I'm happy. Is I mean, I'm, it looks sweet. I'm 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 excited, but I would have been way more excited if they would have like did something different. They can't really they can't really continue from a thing that they're not can't really continuing though. They got to do. I do, mean, do a I different mean, starting point they, though. Like, they, do, they do follow a let's let's like insert like a new character like that. This is gonna be our lead of the films and put them in the like MK universe and let's let's yeah. start let's start a oh they they survived in the the Outlands and. You know, um, oh shit! This is more... differently. <laughs> doing it differently. Like, so you know, that's what I like. It's not Batman and Spider Man, where you're like, yeah, yeah, we get it. He gets bitten by a spider. Yeah, yeah, doing... yeah. Batman's parents get killed in an alley. We're doing the new got... character and stuff. We fucking got it for the thirtieth time. Like, yeah. Every time there's a Batman movie, they got to remind them. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was yeah. To... This way, like, I, as long as they're doing it different, I'm fine. And that's what I like about comic movies when they do shit differently mm-hmm. than the book like you know i don't want it the same like if i already know how it's going to end why am i even watching it well it tends but to like, be the, the way they're doing this they got they're introducing what looks like a new character yeah the cool guy and uh but they're just doing like the, the if tournament they set, if they set if they set it up the way they i think they are mm-hmm. they hopefully don't blow their whole load in one movie and can actually maintain a franchise and keep it going yeah they put down the good groundwork and then actually follow through on it i'm fine with an origin uh showing you know which obviously they're going to show how scorpion became scorpion and i'm i'm probably well, how not... this scorpion became scorpion I, we'll I'm, see we'll I'm see probably... how well they follow the lore because i fucking love the mortal Kombat lore like it that's the best part about the series like i didn't even like the first like handful of mortal Kombat games but I was always like just fascinated by the story. It's like, who the fuck are you, man? Super cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, uh, really, really I didn't care for Mortal Kombat really until Deadly Alliance, and that's when I was like, all right, I'm. A, you finally got me. I'm in. I mean, I enjoyed the first. Uh, you know, I gotta. Four. Say, I gotta say, I don't care for them arcade style. I have, I'm definitely more in on the the home console ports. That's where mm-hmm. I got. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where I cut my my chops on uh on all that shit. But uh yeah, I've there's only been a few that I haven't enjoyed. But uh yeah, I'm all in on on more Mortal Kombat. I'm just happy yeah. to try again. Like is I'm just hoping they do well enough that they can keep it going. Like I said. But, yeah, definitely. Uh I, I love I, did you watch the animated? Movie no, I I need to. Yeah, you do. Scorpion's Revenge or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the uh, I mean, like, I saw the I saw the original cartoon. Yeah, the, it was pretty cool. The one like the pre the one that's the prequel to the first movie, the like '90s kid cartoon one. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's a bunch of cool shit. 
but yeah i'm always i'm always down for a retelling of a story if they tell it different enough to keep it interesting but uh yeah I I'm, I'm mixed on that well they're not gonna like start it like oh what happened after mortal kombat 11 because then you're gonna lose like no no no. because you okay so typically when you're doing a movie adaptation that's not for the fans of the source material that's for the people who are not and that's why they're making this to get more people interested so let's just if we're going to start at the beginning, let's start at the beginning. Let's do the story proper. And that's my always my issue with adaptations. And that's why I don't like most adaptations is because it's like, well, you're doing this because it's beloved. And why is it beloved? Because this is the story they told. Oh, we're just going to fucking change everything. It's like, well, what? Why? Why? And the, oh, the like MK, and the MK universe is so like lush with lore that like, they don't have to do that director thing. Well, well, this is my vision of Mortal Kombat. It's like, well, just pull from a different section of this. Like, there's so many opportunities for different story stuff in well, the Mortal Kombat universe. Like I said, if they do it comic book style where they they do it right and mm -hmm. they don't change it so much that you're like, oh, that's that's supposed to be the Hulk. You know, like you're not gonna be like, oh, that's well, like like our conversation but, about Doomsday in Batman v Superman. Because yeah. why we're we talking about this multi-years old movie because i finally just watched it and we're it's like man they fuck they they fucking as i said they, they did doomsday dirty yeah they rushed it all like everything they made him kind of a joke like he's just uh yeah they took one potentially one of the coolest villains the dc had and just kind of did like they did with the rest of that universe it's a test tube baby it. that's all he is it's like what well, come on because they wanted to go from zero to a avengers level movie in like <laughs> yeah. three movies one movie three well three like they they introduced superman because it was man of steel and then it was so, batman oh. v superman yeah that's well i mean the next and then the next one was the justice league mm -hmm. so like oh yeah 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 so like they uh spoilers for those who haven't seen it so going forward for batman v superman don't be upset about spoilers they they, it, they introduced <laughs> superman in man of steel and then he dies in the next fucking movie. <laughs> so you don't even get to build up any like feeling. They don't build up feeling for their characters. And that's what they like. Like I said, they rush too much. Like they can make 20 movies and fans of DC, as long as they do it right, will keep going. Like, like Marvel fans are like, oh man, another one. Cause they're like, shit. Yeah. This is going to be like 28, gonna... 28 movies later or some shit. 30, you know, I think. Uh, and it's like, and it mixes with their shows and everything. And it's just more to add to the story. They're not mm. starting from the beginning. You're not having a new, uh, you know, a new, they're not going to bring in the Fantastic Four. And the Fantastic Four is going to be like the only heroes in the movie. You know, like, oh, there's going to be like an Iron Man <laughs> fucking cameo or like reference or so, you know, someone's just going to show up. Right. And they integrate it well. Well, mm. this one, they were just like, throw them together. Hurry up. Hurry up! Look at look how good those Avengers movies are doing. Yeah, and if they really just pace themselves, they could, uh, you know, it's kind of a dead spot a little bit for Marvel. The you know, as far as the movies right now, I mean, WandaVision's kicking ass, but uh, they could be shining right now with their, you know, that they like took the time to build their universe more. Yeah, but anyway, I don't even remember what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, more combat. More combat. Yeah. Looks awesome. Check out the trailer if you haven't seen it. If you yeah. haven't seen it, what are you doing? Yeah, like if they, you know, if they don't make Our, it, all, if they, they don't make it just all about the tournament, and that that's kind of boring. Like, oh, I, and one I, of the best I, things I, is it's rating. Yeah, it's R. So there's, there's gonna be actual fatalities and shit, as you can even see in the trailer. Hell yeah! Uh, and I'm all for that. Like, I'm hoping it's not just the main, like that Scorpion's Revenge. The tournament is in it, but the tournament isn't even the main sto like story point. It's mm. just kind of around the the tournament. And if they do it like that, I think that'll be awesome. Like build, yeah. build some story rather than just oh, like you know you, they got to explain like why are these guys all fighting. And you yeah. know why do they all have to come together to fight? I get that, but uh, you know give us something we're not expecting. Yeah. So in that way, I hope, I hope that they do that. But you know, I'm all, I'm just happy there's more Mortal Kombat, man, and it's rated R. Both show, both show. Um, so 
Moving on to another event uh, just happened today at the time of recording. This was uh, Sony's uh, new state of play. More trailers, a lot of things of things that we've already seen before. Um, some had release dates. I didn't note any release dates on this list. So look it up yeah, if you're interested. Uh, mostly just a bunch of updates. Yeah, it's showing more showing because uh, we like some of these games you saw like the cinematic trailers and stuff so yeah. at least they're starting to sh show more gameplay um had a good trailer for returnal i thought um there's a game new game announced called sifu which i think i i read something that might be the same people that made uh absolver which is this kind of really cool fluid looking kind of like martial arts sort of game i hope it sounds for suck it fuck you <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe i don't know um got a gameplay trailer for solar ash that's the uh same folks that made uh hyper light drifter uh looks cool actually i'm a little less my my expectations have lowered just a little bit but it still looks pretty sweet um looks pretty decent i was pretty happy with when they first announced it, it looked good yeah but yeah this one looked kind of yeah same yeah. as you i'm just kind of I mean, I'll still probably day one and as long as i'm not playing something else at the time but we'll see um the next this one, one you're really excited about though the, this the, well the next one i put it on here because i'm actually like it's like oh, maybe i'll give it a, a, a another look instead of just completely dismissing it like everything else uh there's actually they're making like a non-traditional five night five nights at freddy's game it's called security breach uh looks like some kind of like more of a instead of just like oh we're gonna sit in this room and monitor cameras and not get spooked out or whatever this is actually like you're playing a character exploring an area kind of like uh it's like a third person i think it's a third person or is it first person i'm not sure i think it's first person first person yeah but yeah you're explained like you're in like this whole like fun zone place and you're there's like a story and other characters you interact with besides just the the monsters. I'm gonna have to get this probably because your kids. My, my kids are all in on the Five Nights at Freddy's shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there's like the collection that just came out like about a month ago too, and there's a. I don't know, I'm gonna wait for them. I'm gonna snag it <laughs> cheap, but yeah, there's a collection of all the games so far, and then there's a VR game. Mm. And my VR game might be something cool. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not paying much for FNAF. it. FNAF. Yeah, FNAF. FNAF. Uh, we got a trailer for Kenna, uh, which is a kind of cool looking third person action adventure game. Kind of like uh, uh, not, not Pixar, like DreamWorks or something. Yeah. Style. I think it, I, I mean, I'm interested in I would generally not, but just the the game itself looks kind of interesting. So, I'd rather Kino. That would be cooler. Kino. Yeah, from Secret of the Youth. Uh, he get, okay. he gets his own game. <laughs> I'm just gonna fuck that. Kid. <laughs> sure. I've uh, got another trailer for Deathloop. We've seen some trailers for that. I think the game looks pretty cool. Same. Uh, it's a uh, arcane, basically, uh, yeah. Dishonored. Uh, Dark Messiah, so we'll see. Looks pretty cool, decent com uh, concept. Uh, and then uh, I've seen a lot of people humming and hawing about this. I don't give a shit. Fucking whatever naysayers, not you. Some other people online. Uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake Intergrade, which is basically are the you know everybody knew this was going to happen. The PS5 version upgrade of Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, for anybody who owns it on PlayStation 4, you get the free upgrade to PlayStation 5. Um, it's basically Final Fantasy VII RTX mode on, uh, better lighting and stuff, although some textures and stuff proved. They did some bug fixes, uh, added uh, a normal classic mode, uh, whatever. Um, but there's a new chapter. Uh, it's uh, it's like a Yuffie chapter, which they kind of teased in, in in the first part already. What I'm so. pissed off is like I know they're gonna put a thing I'm gonna have to buy, although I already own it and get the free upgrade. That's gonna be like, well, yeah, now I'm gonna fucking have to buy it again. 
I know they're going to do that. That's, I mean, I'm going to buy it again. That's I'll probably I, pre-order it even. Yeah, they're going to they're going to put something that I'm like, well, I got to have that. I'm not going to be some bitch that doesn't have. I that. mean, if they're really yeah. smart, if they're really smart and they really wanted to make some money, they'd put together like some collector's edition of some sort. <laughs> yeah, first like, let go of my balls, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty stoked for it. I mean, I. I love Final Fantasy VII. You know, uh, it would be cool if I don't have. To, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind replaying the game, but I could give it a little bit more. Like honestly, I wouldn't really want to replay Seven probably until like before um, the second part comes out. Yeah. But uh, it'd be cool if I could just pop it in, go to chapter select, load up the Yuffie chapter, and be like, bam. Yeah, if that's the way to do it. I'd be happy. But yeah, I'm not. As much as I love that game, I really that was like my game of the year last year. I think uh, that was probably the last episode we did. So check that. <laughs> yeah, that's two episodes. We did oh, episode two since episodes then. ago. Oh, okay, so <laughs> but Not uh, that awful. Pretty sure that was my game of the year last year. So I'm all in on it. But You're a little quick to replay. I mean, you know, brush up on it, playing the new chapter would be cool. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to feel like I got to play it again. But as you inform me, you can bring your save in. So that's cool. Because I would not be cool with, you know, all the things I've got now not being able to be carried into the next one. Mm. That would piss me the ox. So. Oh, uh, doing it right. And one thing that I always complain about with console games in particular, fucking 60 FPS, man. 60 FPS. Although I don't think the 4K mode is 60 FPS, but hey, that's pretty sweet. This game can do Final Fantasy 7 4K, Final Fantasy 7 and 60 FPS. This game ran great, looked great. Yeah, it was so I don't. They don't need to do nothing, honestly. They could be like, "It's this again," and I'd be like, "Cool." Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was the. the There's some other stuff for State of Play. Um, check it out. There's more things. These yeah. are just the things that I was like, hey, cool. Of note. Yeah. Um, something very random. And I'm like, sure. It's like, sure, why not? Uh, uh, Valve in collaboration with some studio, which I should probably know who it is. Well, you can look it up right now if you want. I could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> what? Uh, We're going to lose our reputation. <laughs> they're, they're going, there's going to be a... A Dota, it's called Dota Bl- Dragon's Blood, which is an animated series based on Dota 2, uh, Defenders of the Ancients, the, uh, mo- the the MOBA game that started all MOBAs. Sure, why not? Maybe it's cool. Uh, looks like it's kind of, it, it, it's not like like the game. They're like taking a character and saying, hey, let's make a movie around this. It's kind of like Castlevania-ish, like that's kind of sort of well animation style anyways i kind of got the vibes like how castlevania series looks uh kind of anime-ish but hey it's like it could be cool i don't know we'll see i tried tried watching the dragon's dogma thing they had on netflix and something about the animation threw me off like at first Mm -hmm. looked pretty cool but then like something about it just got me the wrong way and i just couldn't keep watching it I'll probably mm-hmm. get another shot one of these days, but it looked cool. Like in the trailer, it looked really cool. Then I started watching the shot. I'm like, eh, hmm. something's something's weird about this. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, C- CG anime. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, that know. that 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 can be. Uh, I mean, for me personally, a lot of times it's pretty miss. It, it, it's, it was it's a, cheap. It cheaps out. I think. Know, funny thing is, my wife. Like suggested, like, hey, this is a game, right? Want to watch this? She knows how to get me. I'm like, yeah. That's always I, like uh, immediately, like, uh, uh. tread lightly. <laughs> yeah, she's me, like, uh, I don't know. I get it. Here's well, the thing, based on a game, it's like, oh, that's probably gonna be terrible. I don't know. When it comes to the anime and stuff lately, it's been doing good. But uh, yeah, she uh, yeah, she was just like immediately, like, uh, uh, I don't think I can watch this. Yeah. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. Yeah. So if I do watch it, it'll probably be by myself. Maybe I'll throw it on in the garage while I'm uh, opening up, opening up 200 transformers here or some shit. Yeah. Um, then last little like 
news bit. I, like I said, I like to shout out uh, the document series uh, YouTube channel Gamers, spelled G V M E R S. Uh, yeah. They did a great video called The Tragedy of Anthem. They're the sponsor of our podcast. I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> the way you, I wouldn't mind that. The way, the way shot, like, Hell yeah, I'll shout out gamers. Yeah, the way they shot, the way that we shot them on, you, you think that we like. I, I, it's really, really, I think what they do is high quality stuff. And no, no, I'm just kidding. Check it out. Check it out. Um, so then jumping into the community question here. Uh, it's been a while. So this is like people are like, what the who? Why why are you talking about this? We probably still don't have a it's probably still didn't get any answers, even with the extended uh time to answer. <laughs> Fortunately, we we do. We can always count on what? Uh but anyways, the question was uh, it was related to the announcement that uh Star Wars games weren't only gonna be made by EA. Uh, Ubisoft was making uh, a Star Wars game and other opportunities for other developers. So we were like, hey, uh, what would you like for a, from a Ubisoft Star Wars game? And got a comment from Black Metal Gamer. And he says, new Star Wars game to, uh, to not be the same tedious open world gaming maps like we've been getting with Assassin's Creed or Ghost Recon Wildlands. If it's open world, make it really well made. Don't litter the map with hundreds of icons. Yeah, just exactly. Go here, collect this. Look how big this world is. There's nothing interesting in it after you've experienced one or two of the same type of thing. You're just like, oh yeah, now I got to do all of them because it says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm getting. I, I I feel that 100. Like I'm, I'm really getting over the concept of uh, open world games lately. It just seems. So like I really enjoy it, and if mm -hmm. you do the story stuff, you're like, "Oh, this is awesome." Well, that's I'm, the thing I'm is, not, I'm not saying it's 100 percent of the time, but a that. lot of the ones I've played lately, I'll be like, I would have been better off not trying to do all the stuff. Yeah, I, I'm like over the game, and then teetering towards like, all right, there needed to be about 60 percent less of this, and mm -hmm. I would have enjoyed this game more like the what i call like the false padding bullshit to keep you playing the game just to be you know just yeah to, just to bump up the playtime hours so you're like whoa it was really worth my money i usually skip out on that stuff yeah so what i learned like like a most recent one i can think of where i absolutely loved ghost of tsushima but like having to do 100 percent of the map to find the last little couple of things was the only thing i could say i didn't like about that game it was beautiful. It was great to traverse. But then when you're like, where's that last freaking thing? I swear I've looked everywhere and then find out that it's like, oh, you got to do that one mission. That's how you get that one thing. And you're like, oh, my God. So, yeah, I, I think I'm just kind of over the hundred percenting of mm. it. Cool. Uh, so as is tradition, Game Tense podcast, we need to prepare a community question for next week. Cool. You told me you're, you, that's that was your excuse last week. He's like, I'm gonna really put some thought into this community question, so I think I need another another week to ruminate on it. <laughs> I don't. That doesn't sound like something I would say. I need to stare out at the water, contemplate the you know like a pipe in your hand, just hmm, really, really capture the essence of a good community question. And you're saying you didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll just make I'll make it simple. Diablo two, are you in? And if it's if it's not yes, are you? Uh, in I'm probably gonna block you or something. In. I'm just joking. I'm not gonna block you. <laughs> Differences of opinion is usually a good thing, but if you're not getting this game, <laughs> I I don't need that ne negativity. Yeah, <laughs> I want that sort of toxicity in my life. <laughs> um, cool, cool. So, um. Yeah, you can get to what have you been up to in this last many moons, like a month and a half? I mean, honestly, I've been playing lots of video games. Surprise, surprise. I hear that. But I, I mean, yeah. I, uh, so last time I talked about that, I was on my second playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077. Finished that up. Loved it even more the second time through, like shockingly. So did all the side jobs. 
uh only pretty much only stuff that was on my map are like the like the uh the police assaults in, in some of the cars because i couldn't afford them all um but man i missed so many awesome story moments that were just like hidden away as like little random side jobs as i said that's what i love about the little detailing in that yeah we're just CD Projekt Red does story, does character, and does like the side missions, like to make them feel like they matter. Un- yeah. Unbelievable! Yeah, like spot on the map, you're like you go there and you're like, "There's a reason I'm here." Yeah, this- oh, yeah another one of these. Like uh, again, uh, I just want to say if if you haven't played Cyberpunk, if you're worried about Cyberpunk, yeah, it does suck that they the, that it got released on the base version of the consoles in the state that it did but if you have a pro you have a series or uh, uh a one if you have a pc a playstation 5 oh, so like just invest in what you love why you play still have a base one play this game why? it is why? amazing don't listen to the naysayers don't listen to people says it's uh, un- it didn't deliver on its promises uh or I- i've seen people trying to rag saying it's story it's like you know these people are they're wrong this I mean, game if you is had amazing. a bad experience, like go ahead and vent your frustration. But what I don't get, I I can't stand is the bandwagoning. That's what that's what bugs the shit out of me. People that'll rag on something that they only just saw a video, heard, you know, they're just echoing someone else's thing they said. I mm-hmm. cannot stand that shit. Yeah, and like we but, said, there's like a yearly game we gotta stand up for. You know what's right? Say like, hey this game isn't well, it's like it's like every few months now we got like quarterly game hates you know yeah but it's just, it's just so easy to like yeah. try to get everyone to kill themselves that made the game apparently we got to cyber bully them like yeah. it's that's becoming more and more what the i don't know mm-hmm. thing they have to deal with and you're like oh, okay yeah that's uh that's a valid thing to try to do yeah get everyone fired hope they go bankrupt this and that and you're like jesus yep holy so uh yeah so after i finished you know living in the world of night city for about two months uh well month at so, a month month good? and a half pretty good? Uh, pretty good pretty good uh decided to you know uh you know get out there a little bit more uh do some other things besides run around and uh night city so hey got then, some ambition then put, then out, put out put out a new pickup video pick a video pick a video for anybody who likes pickup videos check it out i did i, I think I, I put too much effort into them but you know i pretend it's just for me he did that for me what a cool guy <laughs> um and then you know, the biggest pickup of all uh uh fortune smiled upon me I got very lucky, scored a PlayStation 5, and it's been great. Um, so pick up PlayStation 5 along with Demon's Souls, because, I mean, that was my my system seller, besides, you know, the upgrade uh, or the, the PS4 backwards compatibility. Uh, but I was like, hey, I just played a really long game. Demon's Souls is not a short game. So... Uh, PlayStation 5 comes with Astro's Playroom, which is it. I mean, it really is to showcase the DualSense controller and like its features. But what a fantastic little game! Four to six hours to get through it if you're trying to go for all like all the like uh, unlockables in the game. Get that platinum. Ton of fun. I mean, I loved Astro's uh, rescue mission on PSVR. Uh, you can play it non-VR. Uh, I actually didn't know that. But Astro's Playroom doesn't require VR. Fun little game. Had a blast. Played through that. Jumped into Demon's Souls. Loved it. From Software is like, it's crack. My crack games. Um, played a caster for the first time. I never played a caster in any uh, Soulsborne game. That was fun. Uh, On to the real stuff. Woo-wee. What'd you play next, sir? Um, then because cartridge club was playing uh, ghostbusters, the video game. And cause or, you wanted to get <laughs> true. They're not going to make me play a game. I don't want to play. Um, 
re- I recently got a good deal on uh, on Ghostbusters uh, the video game remastered, so I played through that. Uh, as a lot of people said, it's basically you're kind of like your Ghostbusters three that we never got has all the voice actors. Um, oh, I'm not a huge Ghostbusters guy myself. Uh, so pussy. I didn't love it, but I had fun with it. So if, if anybody is like, if there's somebody who's like, Oh, absolutely. I'm a Ghostbusters fan. Like you got to play this game. Like, what are you doing? Uh, there are some, uh, there were some frustrating moments in the with the gameplay um what, what bugged you especially the the um like every once in a while it just seemed like they'd throw like so many enemies at you like there's nothing you can do but die um there's a two two particular moments like one i can't remember exactly what it was and the other was uh, with a little uh Cher- little st- the cherubs yeah like what a what a what a fucking bullshit when you're trying to uh, get the the, the act of one through that gate yeah it's like what is this bullshit i would like, say th- i would say that is the only part of that entire game that i hate even when i know what i'm doing <laughs> like that part was just miserable like it took me so like it's like this game is not hard like why no, are they doing this professional to me? it's not even a hard game and even that part it was like an instant kill you're like cool thanks <laughs> um but no yeah it's uh they the whole cast did a, did a great job it was written by um um dan Aykroyd and harold ramus yeah so that that's i mean you know, it's, it's 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 as close as ghostbusters 3 as you're ever gonna get you know because we got no harold ramus going seven years yesterday yeah. actually sadly yeah um yeah so that and then uh i just uh got my copy of little nightmares 2 so love the first one love the second one fantastic follow-up uh anybody who hasn't played these games definitely recommend them it's kind of like inside or limbo different take on you know the the visual storytelling no no dialogue no story no like words like they start you what you see is what you pull from the environments and what you interpret it um great atmosphere a lot of fun and uh last episode i was talking about bloodstained uh classic mode so finally ran through that too free another free dlc update for bloodstained one of the coolest metroidvanias and what a well-supported game bloodstained ritual of the night yes yes not uh not curse of the moon gotta be specific and what's kind of kind of cool is that some of the Curse of the Moon music was in uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night Classic mode. I was like, oh, that's a neat little little connection there. Getting lazy. Getting that's lazy. great music, though. But uh, Classic mode was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, old school castle. It's basically OG Castlevania. Um, not super long. It only took me a few hours to get through it, but definitely worth a playthrough. Um. Then uh, we were talking about this before the podcast, but then I, d- I really got in this mood of like, I want to knock out some games that are shorter games that have been in my backlog that are the- continuously those games. that I'm like, I really need to play that. Like, I really want to play that game. You see um, it and you're like, are you like, oh, if I wasn't playing this right now. Yeah. I never quite seem to go and get it. That's why you should put that on your backlog. Real life. <laughs> True. Yeah uh so i been seeing a lot of targeted ads lately which is kind of weird for uh blades of time which is a game i actually picked up uh at mgc yeah uh it's a playstation 3 game i I think it's on xbox 2 i think i helped you find that wasn't it i was like i think it's over here man i i can't remember exactly i'm sure if, if if that was the case i said it in the the mgc video i did but um I know we were looking for it together. Can you give me you know yeah, you, you, like you're games. we help I each was, other out. the main games to, I was looking for. I'm not trying to just n- drink up all the credit or <laughs> I think I remember it helping you find it though. But uh yeah, I saw like a trailer for it because I it's like, oh what's this game? Of course, you know uh tractor woman on the cover i was like oh yeah that i'm gonna look at that because that's the kind of fucking deviant that i am and hey, this game <laughs> looked pretty cool uh 
oddly enough, it was a spiritual successor and kind of like a re like a redo uh, uh, from uh, their previous game called X Blades, which was like panned. Like that was on the original Xbox, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it's on PlayStation Three as well. Um, and a lot of people said it was not a good game at all. Uh, they it has some, they do some cool things, but they just don't. It's got potential, but they, yeah, this doesn't deliver. Oh yeah, I've got X Blades. That's what it was. Okay, yeah, I've got. Uh, I was like, yeah, I, think I have it, but I'm thinking of uh, I don't know, some other game on mm. the Xbox that was similar idea. So yeah, so Blades of Time, they 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 wanted to keep that character, keep the kind of like gameplay style, and try to do it better. Um, and you know, this is uh, if anybody's familiar with Easy Allies, one of their their guys, uh, Michael Huber, ha- has this um, phrase. that says swimming in sevens, which the games will just get you know seven 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 sevens, and people will just ignore these games. And that's not saying. I mean, seven's not a bad. It's not a bad game by any means. It's just out of a hundred, but seven it, out of ten is <laughs> usually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it just means it's 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 a decent game. You know, it's a you can have fun with this. Like it might not it's you know, change your life, but you probably have a good time with it. And that's entirely what Blades of Time was. Like I really liked the character. Uh Ayumi, the personality of her was enjoyable. I, I like the style, you know. It's just the things that I'm into. Um, gameplay was pretty fun. Kind of reminded like, it's uh, sort of like, um, like Metal Gear Revengeance or, uh, even, I don't want to say like near Automata, but kind of like that fast paced, you know, sword, dual sword combat, lots of combos, lots of ton, like surprisingly a lot of like versatility and kind of the com- combat considering how basic the game is. It's like hack and slash basically. Yeah. It ha- oh, yeah. You know, it's God. Yeah. Devil May Cry got a war, um, with like, if you inserted kind of like a Lara Croft personality into that, because like as you're going through the game, the character like you know she talks out loud, and kind of has a like Spider-Man quips, yeah, sort of, sort of thing. But I really like the character the game. You know, there was things that it had issues with. It had a cool time mechanic that you use in combat. I'd say check out a trailer if you think it looks interesting. Check it out. Don't expect you know the next level thing but i had fun fun enough with it cool uh shorter game too then tetris effect uh everybody pretty much heard of tetris effect you can play it in vr which is what i would recommend otherwise it's just a yeah it's it's a experience man yeah uh you're in one of those like uh i don't know i feel like i was in like a deprivation pod yeah just trippy like the, the music fitting with how you're moving the pieces and uh, the the scenery reacts and like grows as you progress through each stage like quite the experience uh, yeah i'm at the last i think i'm at the last uh level on that god that last level is a bitch it's yeah. uh it, it, it's so most of the levels like uh I you just destroyed the whole game in like one scene. yeah and then i like was like i gotta go to bed and i don't i just don't think i went back to it like i don't think i I didn't say fuck this, but it was like 4.30 in the morning. I'm like, oh, I got to get up in three hours with the kids. I should probably get some sleep. As a VR, uh, I, I've gotten better in the last couple of, couple of years at not just being like, oh, shit, it's that time. Like, mm. it still happens time to time. But the most that that's happened has been when playing VR because you can't just look at your watch or yeah. check out your phone. Uh, last, pers- last time that really affected me, though, was playing uh, Blood and Truth. Mm-hmm. I played the whole thing in one sitting and i was like oh good thing i'm done that game because it's time to pick up the kids or wake wake up the kids right now i literally played it all night and i was like god damn yeah and i will say like surprisingly like there there's there's a few points throughout Tet- tetris effect if you keep going because it will kind of like can when you beat a level it'll just continue on to the next level and not like reset the speed and uh-huh. there's a few points where that it got pretty intense where you got to have a little bit of skill in Tetris. Uh, but that last level is it's, you know, they, they, they'll go easy on you. They start you at like it's speed. Level. Like, Oh yeah. Level. You start to think like, Oh, I'm set up. And all of a sudden, well, just like anytime you play Tetris, one fuck up will destroy your whole game. Yeah. And there, there's, there's one po- like really particular point in the last level where they're like, all right, let's do this. And they crank that speed up, man. And those pieces are just 
raining down. And if anybody saw my just beat it screenshot, like pay close attention at that screenshot. If you look at the top, You're like pretty close to the top. No, the sides are past the top. Like I got so fucking lucky. Like I just got that one piece that just got that one final line for me. Otherwise, like I failed so many times. Like, yeah, I, I gave it a good couple of tries. I remember like not really having. I don't think I had any trouble up till that point. Yeah. Like, like goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Wanted to play some more. Wanted to play a VR game because it's like, man, I haven't played VR in a bit, little bit. Um, and then uh, last game that I finished uh, was another game I've had for a, a little bit on Steam called Lust for Darkness. Uh, this is basically first person experience, uh, aka walking sim. Um, trailers kind of made it look like a kind of like Lovecraft inspired, like eyes wide shut sort of game that dealt with like going to this place and it was like uh you know like essentially like an an occult vibe with like some sort of like sex cult you know it, it's not a game do. not a game for kids by any means even advertised as such uh apparently this is on consoles which i was really surprised about uh, what's that it's the the title of it sounds like a movie that's not for kids right yeah <laughs> lust for darkness i mean even the title itself um but there's, I mean, there's, there's nudity, uh, male, female, uh, like I said, it's a sex cult. So there are people having sex, like, uh, it's a, a walking sim. So like you can, like an adventure game where you can like pick up an object and like rotate it. And it just, it's, yeah, you they, don't even, they don't even give you like descriptions, but like, there's like, Oh, I, I go pick up this option. Oh, okay. Anal beads. Great. Um, sounds more like. Uh, it, it sounds more gratuitous than it is. It's actually the game is tastefully done. It's it's r- pretty short. It's only like a like three three hour long game, uh, but it's a solid narrative. Um, basically, you're like your wife or I. So I wasn't clear for uh, sort of you know, <laughs> uh, but what what I wasn't what I was sur- surprised by is like. Uh, yeah so it does have this like lovecraft uh lovecraftian uh 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 god damn it inspire uh inspire to it but then there's also like uh an hr giger uh aspect that i was like oh cool i was like Mm. awesome they took some some inspiration from giger um so for anybody who like check out the trailer if you it's it's on consoles the 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 censorship which is basically they cover up all the nudity i'm not sure if they like outright remove the sex scenes because those like sex scenes were like they're having sex like there's characters having sex not like not you going in things somewhere yeah yeah. and i was like oh i was like wow i was like actually kind of surprised about that but um if you kind of dig the lovecraftian like if if a lovecraftian eyes wide shut sounds appealing to you uh you might enjoy the game i i enjoyed it uh their sequel is actually coming out soon called uh uh lust uh lust from beyond so i'm i'm on board for that we'll, we'll check it out so yeah a little bit long-winded apologize there uh hey man, it's usually me so <laughs> and um, speaking of what have you been up to you've been playing a few games too I, I, I mean you're you've been killing it you know 120 20 games last year right no it was 160 160 how foolish of me <laughs> 40 <laughs> games just don't even count or what <laughs> so so yeah you've been you've been cranking out some games but surprisingly you don't seem like you're pacing for 160 what's up yeah. with that i don't know I'm at, I'm at 21 so far this year I'm, yeah that, that just, 20 only 21 games beaten like that's I'm just, nothing to scoff at of course i don't know i'm just i've been playing a lot of just things that you can't really beat or are like longer longer shit like a lot into yakuza kiwami been playing a lot of the ghostbusters online for the you know the video the video game on xbox live and people are still playing that shit online that's mm-hmm. great yeah, uh, that's. I'll start from the beginning. I uh, while we're talking about Ghostbusters, uh, as you might have seen, I put out a 
Lego building video of the new Ghostbusters Afterlife Lego Ecto-1. And that was, well, there's a seven hours right there. That's how long it took us to build it. Yeah, did, did and, uh, with the family, with, with the kids, and looked like the kids they are. contributed quite a bit. Uh, yeah, Araya was there the entire time. Uh, Avison was there, I'd say, about 80%. Sarah was there, maybe 50 Fifty percent, and uh, Jerk was in and out, but he's three, so that's forgivable. He just come and check the progress. He was he was like the foreman, just making sure we we're doing good. But uh, yeah, we that was like our family Christmas gift. I bought it for me, <laughs> but it's for the family. <laughs> uh, uh, this I, is for I, us, but you cannot. You're not allowed to touch it once, once it's built. Yeah, once it's built, do not. Touch it. <laughs> it just makes me think of that SNL, the Star SNL Star Wars sketch. Or you can look at it. <laughs> or you can leave it in the box and never touch it. <laughs> uh, that's basically been a lot of my collecting until recently. Speaking of which, uh, I was an inbox collector, Transformers, many different series of action figures and all type. But I'm slowly. Yeah, you know, I know I'm not. I'm never gonna sell these things, so I'm not really worried about perceived worth. I really just like packaging. When yeah, it, when the thing's got a nice packaging. I I just love the way it looks, especially when you got like the whole set and it's like a uniform look mm -hmm. and it looks nice together. Yeah. So uh, the last holdout is my Transformers collection, because I don't know. Uh, that's what got a lot of the same. Like I said, like a lot of the same packaging together and it looks nice mm. uh, hung on the wall. But uh yeah, I've opened all my all my Marvel figures, all my DC figures. And uh it feels really liberating after I can muster the courage to do it because my like, <laughs> looks good. I want to try and integrate some of the packaging into like the shelving and stuff, so it's not a you know, I got stuff going back. Well, I've got some stuff from like the early '90s and stuff, but uh, stuff that I bought in like 2007 and 2006 and shit, and maybe even a little bit older. I think I got uh, one thing I opened was from like 2000, 2004. Like right when my wife and I got together, I remember buying this giant Marvel Legends Venom, and I didn't. I wasn't really even into into collecting action figures or anything at that time. But I just saw this Venom, and I'm like, that Venom's badass, and it's coming home with me. And slowly, I got you know more comfortable and more nerdy around her, and I went pretty hard at stuff, and then I kind of stopped collecting it for a while. But then I, uh, yeah, so I had, I've had shit kind of like accumulating and then overtaking things and then being like, how am I going to, you know, I've had to get really strategic with how I'm setting it up, and then it's to the point where I'm like, I don't know. Maybe just open some of this shit. Mm. So, anyway, besides that, uh, I've been yeah, I've been playing a lot of games. Uh, what you been playing? Uh, Panzer Dragoon, the remake on the Switch. Played it. Glad I didn't order it. Honestly, really? Am fun. I am I in for disappointment? Because I might have pre-ordered it. Fun, fun for, game uh, for the limited run release, anyways. Fun game. Not something I'd pay like whatever 30, 40 bucks for. It was like an hour and a half, I think. Hour and a half, maybe two hours. Oh, really? Just jeez. Good, good, like good, fun, solid game. Uh, good challenge, but yeah, there's not really incl much inclination. It's to no watch. saga. Like I think they could have just put like all the games together and made it an actual mm -hmm. full full price package. I mean, obviously, saga would be the icing on the cake actually would be the whole fucking cake which I mean, will never happen because again that was another victim of lost source code because yeah. retro japanese developers saw no value in holding on to old oh, source code it's shipped throw it out <laughs> yeah crazy but, uh, absolutely insane anyways besides that i uh i i knocked out a couple ones that i've been working on for quite a while uh this one i i was kind of like a love hate relationship with it which is kind of odd to say with how much I love the series, but Fire especially Emblem... with how much I've heard of people raving about this game. Um, you know, well, you'll you'll when I talk about it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Fire Emblem Three Houses. 
Uh, I love the Fire Emblem games, but I've come to realize that I don't really care about the story, really at all. Like I'm like that's cool. I liked uh, you know in the DS ones and stuff, or or even in like the GameCube one, the Wii one, where it's just kind of like a little avatar. We'll talk over stuff right before mm-hmm. you battle. Afterwards, they'll meet and they'll talk a little bit, and then you'll go right on to the next thing. Uh, this had a lot more like wander around. Uh, you know the stuff that I didn't like about Trails of Gold Steel, the social sim stuff. That stuff, I don't care for it. Um, even the interesting stuff, I was kind of like, okay, I kind of just want to like skip this and go to the fighting. I don't really, I don't really need to get to know you. I just need to know how good you are at fighting. <laughs> and uh, uh, once I got past it, I got I. It was a hurdle at first. The more I played the game, the more I grew to enjoy it more and kind of realized the value in it. But at first, it was really like, uh, I kind of should just play another Fire Emblem game where I can just get right into the action. Because, you know, sometimes it felt like quite a while before I'd get back to it. Uh, Sometimes it was just really brief and, you know, I didn't mind it then. But yeah, great game. But yeah, you just should be wary of if you're not big on that kind of stuff, you might not be big on the game uh there's a lot of choice too to it which was cool that was definitely a cool element like you mm. choose what house you go with and all that so mm. there's multiple ways to but, but yeah not a total letdown but there's just some things i usually i uh, don't have very many complaints at all about fire emblem games uh then next up uh one that I got right when it came out, and uh, we chip away at it whenever we can, uh, namely Araya and I, but that's Ultimate Alliance 3, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Um, yeah, we, whenever we can get some time, we, we play it either on the TV or even in tabletop mode. We'll just grab two pro controllers and play it. Uh, other kids drop in and out playing, which is good for those types of games, but uh, Araya and I beat it beginning to end, which was a special because that's the games that my wife and I used to play together. And uh, I just know she doesn't have time to play that now. So it's good to know that uh, she made me someone else who can play those games with me. So that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, then I went on to play one of my Backlog Roulette games. And it was just okay. Hmm? It might be one of my least favorite of my Backlog Roulette games, actually. And that was... Final Fight Streetwise. Um, PS2 game. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've talked about it on here before. That uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Final Fight games. And that's usually just me ripping on the traditional beat up, beat em up ones. This one was like a beat em up with other like story elements and stuff, you know, getting into the 3D age, kind of like how Final Fight was going to be uh, Streets of Rage at first. Mm hmm. Not Final Fight. Um, I mean, uh, Fighting Force. Sorry, uh, was gonna be was basically supposed to be 3D Streets of Rage. Uh, I like Fighting it Force. Felt, it felt flat. Yeah, I do too. A lot of people shit on it, but actually, yeah. Um, yeah, but this one kind of falls flat in a lot of areas. It wasn't the worst game I've ever played, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it was uh, something uh, something to learn from, I guess. Uh, but I wasn't. I wasn't caught off guard since I generally don't care for the Final Fight games compared to other games that are, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, moving on. Uh, G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. It's a brand new game that came out oh, three, four months ago for the PS4. Uh, I'm not, I was never a big G.I. Joe guy. Like, I didn't really watch. I was a G.I. Joe guy. I watched it a little bit. I played with G.I. Joes, but I never really got into the show. Oh, I love the show. He was I, haven't, real, I haven't watched that fucking American shitty hero. G.I. Joe Extreme. Like, I was too old for that stuff, and I watched that. Um, he was <laughs> G.I. Joe real, Extreme. He was a real American hero, and I was Canadian, so I'm like. <laughs> Is that what it was? It like, honestly. Offended your honestly, Canadian the sensibilities? No, the characters yeah, were fine. I was, it I was, was joking. Yeah, it was an entertaining show. <laughs> uh, Pork Chop Sandwiches wasn't actually originally part of the series, so that's highly disappointing. Pork Chop Sandwiches. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, the, you know, just, I was just like, oh, I, can, I can make these stories with my with the GI Joes myself, 
and play. Like, I they were one of my favorite toys to play with, but it, it was kind of weird owning a. You know, I was fine with just the generic ones too. Like I had real ones and generic ones mixed in. Bug it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just saying. Basically, I'm just saying I don't have a lot of nostalgia towards GI Joe. Mm-hmm. Like I get, I I like Snake Eyes, and everyone else can kind of fuck off. Honestly, Snake Eyes is the best. He's one of my favorite characters ever, actually. But everyone else pales in comparison to this motherfucker. So, <laughs> like. Um, I like version two Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow is cool too, but he's like the you know he's like the Sub Zero to yeah uh, Snake Eyes Scorpion. He's got you know he's got to be there. So when I realized like yeah I think I just like ninjas a lot, <laughs> but uh, yeah so it uh, it carried on into this game where you know it was cool playing as the different characters. You get to pick like one or two characters mm-hmm. for permission. You do some as Cobra, some as the Joes. And I was all like, when can I play Snake Eyes again after I played him the first time? <laughs> yeah. Because his sword wrecks everything. And then he has like a, you know, he has like an Uzi type thing that, that wrecks everyone. I'm like, his his weapons were the best. So I was like, man, they know it. They know, they know what they have here. Uh, yeah, I think I think I mostly heard like this was like another one of those games that was kind of like swimming in sevens sort of game. Yeah, it's it it's definitely not breaking a mold if feels like a i don't know like a ps2 game or something it's not triple a it's not awful but it's just kind of middle of the mm-hmm. road you you don't feel like you're doing too much different things in the different levels there's like some vehicle levels that break it up a bit but generally it's just like shoot your way to this flip the switch uh sometimes you know uh sometimes defend this area for a while they'll attack and you're like yeah and just like the, the combat wasn't really that fun it was what the main takeaway was it was just kind of generic like shooting uh mm. but not like not like a call of duty shooting not like a precise like it was just kind of art like overly arcadey so it felt like i was playing with toys so it kind of felt like playing those toy soldiers games i don't know if you've ever played those no but it felt, know, it, felt it felt kind of like that um which it wasn't a bad game but yeah uh like I said, I was just the whole time like when I mean Snake Eyes. Like Snake Eyes is so good that he's like the only like. Have you seen the movies? Mm-hmm. I saw the first one and I hated it. He's the only good part of that that movie too. Like yeah. the second one and the second one, yeah. Like the second one was a bit better. That's what I hear. The first one I... was just like it was trying to be like Halo or some shit. I don't even know what the fuck. I've only seen it the one time. I saw it in the theater. Trish and I were just like, what? What is? This? Is this something I don't remember? Because I like I, I openly just said, you know, I wasn't like huge on it. So I was like, is this a thing I don't remember, or is this something they're just trying to make a thing? Because it's it's not vibing with me. <laughs> so I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, then when I found out other people hated it too, I was like, okay, it wasn't just me uh, <laughs> not, not getting it. Like, oh, you don't remember that? That oh, that was so big on the show. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, if you like G.I. Joe, you'll probably get more out of it than me. You know, just like, you know, people would usually say about licensed stuff, like you said about Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Like, it was cool, but wasn't your favorite because mm-hmm. you got bad taste. Um, <laughs> so anyway, next up, I, uh, uh, speaking of things that aren't usually my taste, I beat a golf game. Yeah, yeah it, I've heard I've heard good things about this one. It is very good. Think of uh, Crashes from the Burnout Games meets Golf in not a golf course like in a kitchen in an alley in a a store uh in a upper class ballroom in a castle with like suits of armor and shit and you've got to you know you've got to reach a destruction level you've got to do different goals you've got to uh yeah you but then at the end you have to sink the putt or it cuts your score in half so yeah you can just decimate the place but if you don't sink the last putt you're fucked so you got to be very strategic with it and mm-hmm. i had a lot of fun with this i uh i played in spurts it was kind of like an in-between an excellent palate cleanser game where i could just like sit down for like 10 minutes and you know do do one one level or something and then come back to it a week later like it wasn't a game i had to be like up on all the time there's no story to it 
so it was definitely a cool like pick up and play random game and uh, i'm glad i saw it through because i was always i love destroying shit and i've said it before <laughs> i love the crash breakers and shit like that in uh burnout games burnout games are my favorite racing games ever so yeah if you like that kind of shit and that sounds like it's something that may interest you it probably will you said you like golf games so oh yeah get in on that yeah get it um closest to a sports game i'll probably play honestly <laughs> next up i beat ghostbusters what? but i've thoroughly destroyed the other versions of ghostbusters i i beat the remaster i beat the uh, th- original version several times i own it on every every way you can own it i own it and i've never played the more cartoony version uh so i took on the ps2 game and it's for the most part it plays a lot alike but uh i don't know i'd say I w- i'm not gonna say real ghostbusters but they're cartoonier versions of themselves i'd say it's more like the comic version because the comic version is kind of drawn more fan you know more exaggerated, kind of like uh, Batman the Animated Series. They're like, they're, you know, kind of weird shapes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe, maybe more like a Johnny Bravo type thing. I don't know. But anyway, uh, still enjoyable. Uh, there's some cool new things that they did differently. Some enemies are different. Some bosses are different. Uh, it follows pretty much the same main uh, story points. But uh, yeah, it was really cool. And yeah. Uh, it's the Cartridge Club game of the month, as you said, and uh, someone you know may be talking about it uh, in a couple of days here. So keep an ear out for that. Nice. Uh, I don't know why they thought I might want to talk about Ghostbusters, but you know that's on them. Next up, uh, speaking of games that people like to talk shit about, uh, Battletoads 2020. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> um. The animation style when you're actually playing the game, it suits it. It's a goofy cartoon, you know. Mm. It's not a serious, serious, gritty thing to begin with. And uh, honestly, I had a yeah. I I say give it a chance. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, the challenge is there, but I wouldn't say it's as hard as the older ones. But there's like, you know, there's some turbo tunnel ish stuff there. But uh, you're, you're given more of a chance, I think. Um, until I figured out there was like a button to push to like move around faster, I was like, God damn, this guy drags mm. <laughs> for a while. But uh, yeah, there's like a you, you can move faster around, you know, it's like a little bit of a dash button. But then when I was like, until I was like halfway through the first level, I was like, Oh, come on, man, walk to the other side of the screen already. But uh, yeah, I was, I was pleasantly surprised, so that's always a good thing. I wasn't expecting much, but I was like, Yeah. Pick it up and check it out. Mm. That's I don't like to go by what people say. We got a physical version, maybe I'll. Yeah, it was. I don't know if I bought it. It just I it came up as it was done downloading, so I don't know if I bought it and didn't remember. Like a game, bro- game Pass thing or something. Asked my brother if he bought it. He goes, "No." I was like, "I remember I wanted to check it out, but I don't remember buying like a one of like the Microsoft cards and." redeeming it and buying it i was like maybe i did i don't know i'm kind of ridiculous so possibility that i bought it i don't know i think it might maybe if i did it must have been on sale anyway um come up to another game that i figured i would love uh but i i remember from back in the day i don't particularly love this one spider-man venom separation anxiety i love me some maximum carnage hell yeah even with its super duper cheap bosses like i acknowledge that um a lot of i i've seen i've I've never seen people rip on it until recently i've seen people like actually giving it some hate for that um and i guess i understand it since i finally i finally like just late last year like only a couple months ago i beat maximum carnage like legit Mm -hmm. and yeah you basically just save up your lives for the cheap ass bosses that you're like lucky to get the game, on, I mean, the game definitely has issues. Yeah, so I'm not denying that, but it's still going back. Like oh, that, was yeah. the first, that was like one of the first beat 'em ups I really got into, and that 
honestly got me more into spider-man like i liked the spider-man animated series coupled with that it made me go man i gotta check out these comics like yeah that's i got like a whole i got a whole bunch of i got the whole series unfortunately because then yeah and and the weird thing is i would have said it got me into green jelly too but i was already in green jelly yeah yeah. the same my friend (laughs) My friend and I were already listening to that, so we were like, "That was like another reason to check out the because we heard like, oh yeah, they're in that game." And we're like, "God damn!" So, yeah, that was cool. Uh, the second one, my, uh, the only thing that really improves is uh, you can stagger the. I noticed you can like kind of stagger Carnage more than in Maximum Carnage, so mm-hmm. he still basically does the same cheap shit. Uh, and you know they they throw a lot of double team bosses at you, but uh. Just like a maximum carnage, but uh, it's not as bad. So they made them more manageable, and they added two player. But honestly, for some something in this game just doesn't feel right. It mm. looks cheaper, yeah, and it's just not as fun. I yeah. just I think most I people I, agree. But I thought, you know what? I've never played it all the way through. I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, so I, I did. Never beaten it. And uh, yeah, probably the only time I ever will. Uh, I. I, I don't know. I, I never really... I played a little bit. I think my friend and I rented it one time, and we got pretty far, but I remember like we died, and then we were like, kind of like, I don't really want to try again. Mm-hmm. You know, usually you'd get really far, and then you're like, oh, we were so close. Let's keep going. We were just like, yeah, I'm good. Let's play the other game we rented. <laughs> so, yeah. There was that. And uh, another game I've gotten pretty far in. Uh, I didn't play it until like maybe like two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, I haven't played much of this, honestly. As we know, I haven't, uh, I, I never had one. My, I haven't had one since they were new. So, uh, Contra Three: The Alien Wars. Uh, what else do you say about Contra? Yeah, everyone knows what it is. Everyone knows, up until this point, at least, they were really great games, and then they were kind of hit and miss, and remain hit and miss. But uh, this game was a masterpiece. The mode seven shit they do in it is just awesome. Uh, right, and it's not really. I don't know. It doesn't feel. You definitely die a lot. Yeah, but it doesn't feel as like cheap deathy as like when you die in like you know the first two. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's one of those games where if you die, it's your fault. And there's there's always a way to escape death, so. You just kind of learn the patterns. That's all these games are, is learning patterns. The same guys are going to jump up the same spot at the same step you take every time you play it. So you're always just going to, you know, some the bosses might be a little bit more unpredictable. But for the most part, I found the bosses a bit easier. Uh, and a lot more fun. Just like the, the cool shit they tried. And it was like, this is, I think this is my favorite Contra game. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of weird that I beat four before three, not just Better because hardcore, not not just because the... I fucking love hardcore. Hardcore is good. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It got me thinking, but I thought it was weird that I beat four, which I would call mm-hmm. more an obscure game before I beat three. But yeah, here, I've never beaten three. Here we are. Um, yeah. So yeah, good game. Um. Yeah. Then uh, I played another bit of a a weird odd. D- yeah, Odd Duck of a game called Into the Dead 2. Uh, our friend, Chris Pico, Chris the old ass retro gamer, uh, showed me this game. He picked it up and he's like, oh, it was just dirt cheap. And then he showed me the cover. And on the cover it says Ghostbusters and Ned Living Dead add-ons included. And I'm like, Ghostbusters? Ordered it, then looked up what this game about. And it's essentially... <laughs> Uh, like it's a runner game, but not mm. like any of the games I've ever really seen before. It's not like Maze Runner or you know those infinite runner games. You're basically it, running at all times. You don't slow down. You control your strafe, and you are running towards a goal. They're about one or two minute levels, and you're going through hordes of zombies. You can avoid them. Uh, you only got to very small amount of ammo to start with so you got to be really strategic not just blowing everyone away there's little uh, goals for each level 
and it's a lot of fun. Holy shit, was there a lot of levels? There had to be, I think, 120 levels. Holy shit. Um, there is there's 60 in the main campaign, but once you get to certain points in the main campaign, you unlock side campaigns that are about 12. I think it's yeah, I think it's about 12 levels each. Mm. And those like kind of flesh out the story. They're either take place with the guy from the main story or someone he encounters or someone that's close to the same area as them. They all kind of wind together. Uh, overall, it's a pretty cliche zombie story, I'd say. Um, but I really liked I really liked it. It was very, I'd say basic, but the graphics were decent. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun for like it was only like a fifteen dollar game Canadian, I think is what I paid for it. Mm. And uh, I gotta say though, and the weirdest twist of events is you don't unlock Ghostbusters until you beat the game. Uh, you unlock these side stories, like I said, um, at certain points, and I think forty set level forty sevens where you unlock Night of the Living Dead which was pretty cool. It was like, it wasn't the same story from the movies. It was just kind of like taking place in the same close by. It was like a side story, like, like the ones from the main mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, It did a lot of different things, but you know, with using the same mechanics as the game, but I got to say, I was all like, Oh, of course they're saving the best for last. Cause I have to beat the game before I can even try the ghostbusters thing. So they know I'm not just jumping in playing ghostbusters and, done with it uh i didn't like the ghostbusters part as much as uh the rest of it they didn't fit the style of game mm-hmm. uh they had different ghostbusters weapons that you could choose you could choose like the two handgun things kind of like, kind of like uh, answer the call had uh, you got like a shotgun thing that's kind of like from the, the video game um and then they got the the one gun, as long as I had it, I know I was good, which was the, uh, what's that one that shoots like the orange blasts, the uh, photon cannon or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one was, uh, that one was amazing. But uh, the the regular like photon one was kind of wimpy. And it's not like it's ammo, it's like blasts and stuff. And with using ghosts, sometimes you're like, I know I shot that motherfucker <laughs> and they'd get you. And uh, in the main game, if a zombie grabs you, you've got a knife. So you got like a kind of like one free grab, like they can mm-hmm. grab you, you get out of it automatically, uh, kind of like on Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, but in the Ghostbusters one, it's like, no, ghost touched you, you're dead. So there's a lot of like, fuck, man, this is actually harder than the, you know, I had to be more strategic and avoid things more than going like, oh, I got enough ammo to take out this bunch of dudes uh so some of it was enjoyable but some of the the levels were really like i don't like this so yeah it was a it was a weird uh mix of ghostbusters too because you're playing with the original ghostbusters but it's like they couldn't decide what what they wanted to do egon looked like egon from the real ghostbusters but they were all wearing like the movie style suits so they're all in like the brownish gray jumpers but he had like the red glasses and the big blonde weird looking alien hair mm-hmm. and then ray looked like ray from the real ghostbusters but he sounded like he was trying to be dan Aykroyd, but not doing a good job and peter looked more like real ghostbusters and winston didn't look like winston from anything really i guess maybe more like real ghostbusters uh but it was it was cool seeing all that stuff like uh, like a different interpretation of it. But yeah, like the, overall, I was I was a little disappointed in that. But not the game overall. It, mm. it wasn't anything to write home about. But it was uh, a solid experience. Yeah. Uh, then I'll shut the hell up. I think. Oh wait, I got I beat Teen Titans with the kids. That was fun. I beat the Bouncer, which is like an early beat 'em up on the PS2, made by Square Enix. It's short but sweet. The story's dumb, but the game is fun. Uh, Black, which is a uh, you know really good shooter. Oh, I got correct you actually. The bouncer, I think, wasn't the bouncer the last SquareSoft game? Might be. 
I know it was. An, I know it was really early in the PS2. I thought. I think I, it was the last SquareSoft I, game be, before they became Square Enix. It might be. Um. Yeah, it's it was solid fun, but like yeah, yeah. it was like it was pretty basic. It, it was like a beat 'em up where they with Final Fantasy looking characters, but mm. yeah, it was good. Uh, Black is a shooter that really held up. Actually, I was impressed. But it was the hardest game I've beaten a long time to get like a decent screenshot of because mm-hmm. there's so much action. I couldn't just hold up my camera and take a picture of the action. And then the cutscenes were like like an interrogation thing. And it was all like you'd see like this guy's eye and then his mouth talking. And it was all like, you know, the blacked out lines and like documents and shit. Mm-hmm. And it was like, no, oh, there's, there's really nothing to take a picture of here. Hmm. So uh, it fit the game, but as far as like screenshots go, it looks like I just took a picture of random bullshit and then the end credits. Mm. And then last thing, uh, I beat Ghostbusters. Again? <laughs> Different one. Uh, the one that came out in 2016, that's like an isometric uh, twin stick shooter, came out at the same time as Answer the Call, but hold on, don't stop listening. It's a different team. It references the movie, honestly, because it was the new the new thing at the time you fight some of the ghosts from it but it's a totally generic random made up team and it was enjoyable for what it was um i got i got i paid like 10 bucks for it when it was like a couple months old because it got panned uh it's nothing revolutionary doesn't feel next gen or anything but it, if you like twin stick shooter games you like ghostbusters honestly i liked the mechanic of catching the ghosts uh yeah it was fun you can play four player co-op on it so mm. that was fun and that's it. Speaking of long-winded, I wasn't trying to one-up you. <laughs> but, uh, it's all good. You know, got to catch up. We got we to gotta do these podcasts more often. Then we don't have to... So I say with Chris so we don't have our three-hour episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, because of that, we are running a bit long. So I think um, I think we'll, we're going to skip the upcoming games. You know, I don't think there's we're going to mention anything that anybody doesn't already know about. There's not a whole lot, really, anyway. Um, so then, of course, I'd like to kind of give a shout out Cartridge Club, Game of the Month Club, uh, get involved, Twitter, Discord, you know, it's good times. Uh, mm-hmm. February, they're playing Ghostbusters, yeah. the video game. Uh, we got a little inside, a little, you know, maybe somebody's on there, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Surprise, <laughs> that might not be so surprising after listening to this. Imagine the episode will be available in the next couple weeks. Uh, what is currently available that wasn't available last time is the Life is Strange uh, podcast is available, as well as the Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap podcast is available. So definitely check those out. Good listens, good time, great guests, great hosts. Good games. Yeah. And then... Uh, Cartridge Club game of the month for Feb- or uh, for March is uh, TMNT Mania, yeah. which is which I took I took completely the wrong way. <laughs> well, th- th- uh, hadn't had officially settled on what it was going to be, but it is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game, uh, the the NES, also the arcade game, but the NES version. Uh, Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist. So all three games are the focus of the month. But I took it upon myself to be ridiculous <laughs> and vow that I'm going to beat every single handheld and not Tiger handheld, but uh, you know, Game Boy, DS, and console Ninja Turtles game because I own them all and I want to get use out of them. So and then good that's, luck. That's basically why I've been kind of taking it a bit easy because i was like i know i'm gonna be just sitting on the couch a lot yeah crazy month yeah so yeah i'm looking forward to that some of them might be before uh but looking at the overall list there's a lot i haven't so looking forward to that i've even got the uh delisted ones from like the xbox arcade to play so that's good out of the shadows cool uh then quick save club um they took a little bit but the torchlight 2 episode is available and 
I'm not sure what they're playing right now. I can't find the information and I can't remember what they said at the end of the episode. So sorry about that, guys. I'll get you next time. Sweet. Which will be in two weeks. Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. So what uh, What are you planning on playing? Well, I guess in the next couple of weeks, you kind yeah. of already just answered that. It's coming up. It's coming up in like a week. Um, I'm just gonna be putting around on some games. Uh, I was telling you, I was checking out. You know, I realized I have like all the WWE games dating back to SmackDown One. So whatever the the double renaming of the series, and I was like, you know, I gotta try playing some of the newer ones. Check them out because you know I pop in every couple of games and check them out. But I was like, yeah, I'm gonna bring one to work and play it. And I was not into it. Hmm. So, uh, I don't think I'll keep going on with that. Maybe I will in passing, like once in a while, I'll pop in and play a couple matches. But uh, yeah, I'm not loving it. Uh, been going hard on the Ghostbusters online. Might do some more of that while the the month is still going to be in the you know be festive with Ghostbusters month. But uh, yeah, you know me, I'm a feather in the wind. I just go wherever the games take me, whatever game I pick up and to start playing. Probably yeah. some Yakuza. That works. It's gotta. Yeah. What about you? Uh, so I am currently playing uh, Spec Ops The Line. Oh. So I don't have too much left on that. To wrap, wrap up that. Pretty good so far. Heard I've always heard really good things, particularly about the story. And uh, it's always on those lists, eh? Like the yep. Crazy story twist. And stuff. Doing it's doing justice so far. We'll see what happens. And afterwards, um, now I want to play it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm kind of just chasing random backlog games, but I've really been like, I really want to play Blasphemous, and they just put out a new, like, free DLC. I, I think it's free. Um, that is like a Bloodstained crossover with Miriam. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I've wanted to play the game for a while. I got the collector's edition. I always try to make sure I play my collector's edition games because I think I've got an edition at your house, don't I? I think so. I don't know. I, uh, I can't remember. But that was that an act that wasn't a that wasn't like a four week release. That was an actual like limited run thing, right? I can't I'm remember. Pretty sure, got, I'm pretty sure I got you to order it for me. Either that or it's sitting at my Yeah, box. it's one of those two places. I don't remember what's in the goodie box. Got you a little goodie box. Yeah, I got, I got a couple. Of <laughs> so it's going to be it's going to be a good meetup. But yeah, there. I was thinking about maybe um Oh, cuz I'm sure Blasphemous is going to be a hefty, you know, there's a little bit, there's a bunch of DLCs they put out so that might be a little be a bigger of experience. So might try to squeeze in something short real quick too. Um, I, I just, I randomly came across some like funny, like VR video that somebody uploaded and turns out that they were goofing off in, um, the walking dead saints and sinners. And I was like, Oh, that, I mean, not the video is funny. Sure. But what, like what they're showing, I was like, wow, that looked really cool. So it kind of, I mean, the game looked cool as is. Yeah, I maybe was I, that they maybe. wouldn't be getting that at Walmart, so I pre-ordered that. And guess what? They got ten copies at Walmart, and now uh, I can't play it unless I, unless I buy it again. Yeah, play it, and then when I can get my mail, just return the sealed copy. <laughs> but I also run the risk of it going on sale or yeah, something in the meantime. So I'm like, I don't know what to do because I really wanted to play that one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's uh, you own that one already, or did you? Yeah, I have it. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I am going to let everyone listening know how they can get a hold of us if they would like to get a hold of us, and I hope you do. Please. Of course, the podcast is available on podcast apps, SoundCloud, YouTube. Apple Podcasts, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find the Game Tennis Podcast. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I am on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look up the Game Grinder and you will find me. You know and, what? J- and if What's you're that? missing us and you notice it's been a while, just start chirping us on the socials. Make an <laughs> yeah. episode, you lazy bastards. 
hard is it to talk to a friend? <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, now they know how to prod me if they want to, if they want to prod you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Corpse Flood Gaming. Do it. Do it. Hit them up. Hit us up. Talk to us. Let us know your thoughts. Comments. We love con comments on the podcast, especially on the YouTube. Makes us feel special. Invalidated. And thank you for our uh, you know, usual listeners and commenters. Yeah. Sweet. Yes. Well, so hopefully we'll see you again before too long yeah and that is going to do it for this episode of the game tennis podcast thank you very much for listening and we will talk to you next time Woo!